this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending June 29th. For those of you that are interested, especially those geeks that like to be sugared up and caffeinated up for a long night of gaming, Twinkies are coming back. Yeah, Hostess Twinkies. They've gone bankrupt themselves, but they've sold off the brand names to various manufacturers. And if you go to the Hostess.com website, there's an actual countdown clock till July 15th. So in the U.S., they will be back on the shelves. Um, so just to get let you guys know. Next up, this is from Bangalore Bobble. I did ask last week if anybody could track down that air-driven motorcycle that the students in India at the engineering college made. He did come up with the link for me, and as usual, all the links I will have posted below. It's the uh, small air-driven motorcycle based on a slightly under 100cc engine converted to be driven on air. It also uses diver tanks, too. So check it out if you get a chance. Very good video of what these students accomplished. And uh, even if it isn't something that goes into production, um, kudos to them for what they did. Um, next up, this is, um, I'm going to do, first I'm going to show you a, a, a picture of this that was sent to me by my friend Lonnie Brightex. He invented or, we you say, tinkered together a couple of different mounts for a helmet. And the nice thing I like about these, hel these helmet mounts that he made is they don't alter the design of the helmet itself. They don't drill into the helmet. They're easily removable depending on how you choose to mount them. One, you can uh, choose to mount them either with... Uh, heavy-duty Velcro, or you can use some of that super-duty mount tape, such as stuff made by 3M or something like that. But towards the end of this, what I will do is he's, I got a chance today, he sent me the video, so uh, I got a chance to get a copy of the video that he made showing what these mounts are like. Here's a quick look at the diagram, and then later on he'll, ex he'll explain to you um, the one that he did mount on his helmet, the chin bar mount. So um, immediately following, I will play his video. This was sent to me by Clash230, and this is also a video by his friend Henry Corrigan. I hope I pronounced that right. I'm probably uh, mumbling these things up a little bit, but this is a German boat lift. And uh, I did have this, I think, on a TDD report in the past. I have actually had this. It's the Nieder, let's see if I can pronounce this right, Niederfinno boat lift. It's a really cool boat lift. It's about 10 stories high. It takes a boat or a barge or anything like that and from a lower position of a canal to a higher position of a canal, which is about, uh, I think, 36 meters high, something like that. The whole structure itself is about 10 stories tall. And believe it or not, um, there's some updates on it. The reason why I really wanted to do this is, as of 2006, because this boat lift itself is getting so um, crowded with the amount of traffic it has, and it's also the practical size of it is getting rather small. In fact, the barges that go through it have to be broken up instead of staying together. So they're actually coming up with a newer one that they're working on right now that's uh, started in 2006 and it's going to be, I guess, completed sometime in the next few years. But still, even with the uh, new one, when it does come into service, this old uh, boat lift itself is going to still stay running until at least 2025. It's had quite a few upgrades itself, so it still will be plenty functional. So if you get a chance, I'll give you the link to that video too. And if you just type in, you, you can also look, look beside it or just type in, you'll find a lot of others. This is, this is a very popular tourist destination. They get a lot of tourists come just to watch the boats being lifted on this canal. Next up, this is from 1954 Shadow. High-end cannons can make solar panels for half the cost. Um, this is kind of cool. What it is, if you look at the picture I'm going to put up here, it kind of looks like uh, the, the thing out of Death, the, from the Death Star in Star Wars that uh, was a planet killer. Well, what this thing does itself is it actually takes rocks of silica, which are what silicone chips are made out of for solar panels, and injects hydrogen ions into them. And the reason being is once these hydrogens are injected into the latticework, they can heat up the structure and cause these crystals to fracture, but in a very predictable way. So you have these silicone wafers that are just a matter of a few microns thick. Whereas before, what you would have to do is you would take the silicone themselves, the silicone material, and you would take some kind of a wire saw or something like that, and by sawing these into sections to make them uh, so that they weren't too fragile, you were using a lot of extra material you really didn't necessarily need and every one of the cuts with the wire saw also used up as much material as you could to use um, to make extra silicone uh, cells for these panels. So this way you'll get a lot more production out of the uh, same amount of material. <clears throat> Let's see, the, the normal material for solar cells is about 
0.2 millimeters, but this material that they're actually going to produce by using this uh, ion cannon, I guess you could call it, would be 20 microns thick. Just to give you an idea, that's about a third the thickness of the average human hair. Human hair is very a little bit, but the average human hair would be uh, about three times thicker than what these cells are. And what they're going to do is they'll put a metal backing on these cells so that it will still maintain uh, its enough uh, material strength so that they don't shatter because they are very fragile. But by doing this, the uh, firm called Twin Creeks, they uh, can make it competitive with the Chinese products. That's the really important thing. And they're going to send uh, some of these production machines that actually do this to the United States so that we have the possibility in the U.S. of producing competitive solar panels for um, half the cost of what solar panels used to be uh, costing. So kudos to that, and if we can bring some jobs back to the USA, even the more better. Uh, let's see. And I guess from that's, that's it for this week, and I will uh, go right to the video that Lonnie's got, and uh, take care, everybody. I will catch you next week. So hello, everybody. I want to try and make this video. I hope it comes out well in a way that you can understand. Uh, I sent Chuck a design on a GoPro mount that I've made it for the chin bar uh, for the showy helmet and uh, I sent him the designs and he asked me to make a short vid of if, if I had it installed on my helmet and um, yes I do so this is the the uh, helmet mount that I have on mine I'm sorry the camera mount chin bar mount that I have on my showy and the way I made this is I took a piece of sheet metal, pretty thin, and uh, actually it's just a nail plate that you can buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. And what I've done is, is I've pounded it and bent it and uh, made it into a shape like this. So this is similar to what I have in here. This is, this is the original version that I have here. It's really crude and has some cuts on it that I didn't like. And so I, that's why I didn't use this one. And it's best if you don't use cuts to shape your metal. It's best if you pound it. That way you get rid of the sharp edges. So anyway, the way this works is after you get it bent like this into that shape, you take this end here this is kind of hard to do with one hand so then you take and slide it between the the shell and the liner of the helmet so it slides up in there like that and then you mount your GoPro mount right here <coughs> and you can bend this more or open it up more just depending on the shape of your helmet and this part right here, um, you just kind of have to pound it to the shape of your helmet. Same with this area right here, you just pound it to the shape of your helmet. Um, my showy helmet is very angular right here, and so it was, it was pretty difficult to come up with that shape. But I, I wound up doing it. And if, you, if it's in a, a real, if the metal that you use is real springy, you might be able to get away with just sliding it up in there like that uh, and it'll stay with just the weight but I wouldn't trust it so what I did is I added some uh, VHB tape right here I slid it up in there attached it and I clamped it with the VHB tape on there and let it set and dry up I let it set overnight and it stays it's not coming off then you just mount your flat GoPro mount right there or curved if you if you've bent your metal enough but, but either way it'll work so and if I have to this and another good thing about this right here is it doesn't um, damage the helmet any any at all so I can take this thing off of here and and uh, do something else with it or if I don't want the GoPro mount, I just have to make sure that I get the VHB tape off. And when I put this thing back on here, then I have to reapply the VHB tape, which is not that big of a deal. 
So anyway, that's what I've done on my Shoei helmet for my GoPro. Uh, the design that I sent him could also probably be used for the uh, Sony action cam. And I think the way that that would work, and you can look at the design that Chuck has, and you got your your clip that comes up like this, and you come back down and then bend it over. This way, you take this part and bend it over and drill you a quarter inch hole and then using the quarter 20 screws and screw it to it. And then you mount it on the side of the helmet. And that may work for the Sony, I'm not sure. I don't have a Sony to try it, but... Um, you could use it for the drift also, but you'd have to lay your drift camera instead of sticking straight up like this you'd have to lay it down and I didn't like that idea or you could put your drift camera in this configuration put a screw behind here screw it in this way screw it in to where it exits out here so but anyway this video is for Chuck hope you like it